In 2019, the British government committed the UK to achieving net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. Over 130 countries around the world have pledged to hit the same target. It's a highly ambitious deadline, and it needs to be. Delaying action on emissions risks runaway climate change. At the same time, choices we make now will live with us for decades or centuries to come. It is important we act now, and it is important we get this right. This series of video explainers will explore how we navigate our way through an increasingly complex and connected modern world to reach net zero, in line with the Paris Agreement. We call this joined up process a system transition, and it's how we get to net zero. Nicholas Stern is a former chief economist of the World Bank, who hit the headlines in 2006 when his stern review on the economics of climate change was published. The 700-page report laid out in stark terms the devastating economic toll that climate change would have on the global economy if left unchecked, and stressed the economic benefits of early intervention. Fifteen years later, net zero remains at the top of Stern's agenda. If we're going to stop temperatures rising, we've got to go to net zero. And to get to net zero emissions, we have to radically change in real time, just two or three decades, the way we run our economies. And that first decade will be absolutely decisive. But when we look at that challenge, actually, we will be discovering and creating a new form of economic development, much cleaner, much healthier, much safer, and much more productive than has gone before. But government setting an audacious goal is one thing. Making it a reality is a far bigger challenge. We have really the biggest transformation the world has probably seen in a peacetime economy, with enormous progress required this decade. But you've got to invest to get there. You've got to change quickly. You've got to manage that change changing in the very big systems of cities, energy, transport, land, and of course, a big change in the overall system of the way the economy functions. Achieving net zero is a massive systems challenge. It's going to involve simultaneous transformation of a whole range of vital and interconnected infrastructure systems from transport and housing to energy and manufacturing. So we absolutely have to take a systems view to understand interdependencies between those different components of a system, understand where the trade-offs are that we're going to have to make, opportunities for leverage and incentivizing the right behaviours so that we can align all these different factors towards this singular outcome of net zero. A systems perspective shows us the crucial connections between the systems upon which we depend. Infrastructure systems around the globe rely on natural resources and ecosystems for their materials, energy and safe operating conditions. In turn, our infrastructure systems depend on and support each other, so when we make a change to decarbonise our transport system, it also changes what we need from our energy system and from our built environment, and vice versa. Making good decisions for any of these, and especially making decisions that protect the ecosystems they rely on, requires a strategy for all of them. Without a framework for joined up policy making, finite resources such as zero carbon electricity supply or the rare metals that we need for key technologies such as batteries are not going to be available when and where we need them. So we end up in, you know, in a position where we could be in this macabre version of whack-a-mole where we reduce emissions in one place and then they pop up somewhere else in the economy or perhaps in another country. We deploy a new technology but we don't have the right structures in place to get the benefit. You can end up creating more problems than you solve. Engineers are often the people building, operating and integrating all the parts of these different systems – transport, energy and buildings. Engineering skills and systems thinking are needed to bring them together to create a net zero future that works. Engineers are innovators, problem solvers, systems thinkers. They're fundamental to fully realising net zero anywhere in the world. And the systems approach is really core cool to engineering. It's what we sometimes call one of the engineering habits of mind. And it provides us with this structured, disciplined approach to managing complexity. It's like a toolkit that we can use. Engineers can also use systems approaches to handle less tangible products and to help us cope better with uncertainty. So it's really important to remember that when we talk about systems, we mean socio-technical systems. We need to think about how systems work in the real world, interacting with people and planet. 
Implementing Net Zero is an unprecedented and all-encompassing challenge of delivery and integration. Engineers will need to collaborate with other disciplines, policymakers, and crucially the public to guide the transition in a sustainable and just way for all. It's a combination of science, engineering, public policy, city planning, town and country planning. It all has to be put together. So you need the systems engineers of the really technical system engineering kind because these are complicated engineering systems. But at the same time, you need the systemic side of society, economy, government to make this happen. And the government side is critical. With the world's attention currently fixed on COP26 and what comes next, this series of video explainers will explore what a system transition is and why we need to make it happen by looking in turn at energy, transport, the built environment and how they all come together, we hope to inspire those making the key decisions in government, industry and beyond to harness a whole system transition to net zero, guided by justice and enabled by engineering. <laughs>